Um, as it turned out, he had been sexually offending against every female member of the family for 40 years, across two generations, and not one of them ever said anything to anybody else, including each other. And we're talking about sisters, cousins, really close family. Why did someone not warn me? I was furious. In the beginning, I was furious. How could you not, how could you let me put our daughter in that position without warning me? And so became apparent the power of silence and secrecy and shame. The very, they're the three S's and they are sending our children to the, to the, to the depths of despair on a daily basis because we, adults, haven't got the backbone to stand up for them. We don't want to talk about it. We don't want to see it. Oh, God forbid it's anybody that we know or in our organisation or in our family even worse. But, ladies and gentlemen, these sex offenders are everywhere. They're in every organisation. They're in child protection charities. They're in churches. They're in the police force. They're on sitting on the bench as judges. Um, they're teachers. They're, they're everywhere. Um, most men are not sex offenders. A huge majority of men are not sex offenders. Some women are sex offenders, more than we like to imagine, um, which is something that the community is going to have to learn to live with and to learn quickly. Because the temptation to just drop your children off because it's, it's Mrs Jones instead of Mr Jones is all be all right, is not the answer because Mrs Jones could very well be a perpetrator or a bystander. These priests were harming children. They knew that, they just kept moving them around. They didn't, they didn't stop them. They didn't offer anything to the victims either when they came forward and I think that was the, I mean, it was all awful. But one thing, and you know, you need to know this especially, I think, um, of the, the, uh, being in the church, the body of the church, if you've got a, if we, we see survivors all the time, victims, children. It's bad enough for a child when they they lose trust, that kaleidoscope, when they've lost it in their father or their stepfather or in, in you know, they've got, they've lost, they've lost all that belief and trust. But if they, if they lose it in, in their faith as well, then they're, they're such destroyed people. They are so destroyed. And so when a, when a priest um, commits these crimes, or when a church fails to, to acknowledge their pain and to bring them back to the beautiful person that they are, to let them feel God's love, to let them feel that what happened to them was not their fault, it is destroying them. So when this happens in the church, um, it's almost twice as bad. Because the church is what the community is looking for, for love and trust. It's the harbour where nothing else is working. So if you go to the church and you're not finding that there, then where else have you got to go? And, um, and sadly, a lot of these kids are committing suicide, aren't they? And they are taking overdoses because they don't have the faith and the trust in the church that they used to. And that is your challenge. Your challenge and, and the collection of the Christian community is to build that faith back because it's been just, it's just been so trashed, particularly by the major churches. The past is all about silence and secrecy and shame. It's about protecting your reputation of your family and of your church or your institution by betraying children. The future is about breaking the silence. It's about speaking out. It's about education. The, the hope from Patricia lies in education. You know, we have to start. The hope lies in education. And I'll leave it there. Thank you very much.